Hello noble home dogs and pup champs. Last night there was the big Disney shareholders conference, which was basically a huge dumping ground of information of Disney just blowing their load, showing us everything they've got planned for the foreseeable future. And perhaps the crown jewel of all this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We now have a much clearer picture of what the future of the MCU is going to be. And in today's video I will be giving my thoughts on phase four going ahead, what I'm most excited about, and and the projects I'm, I guess, a little bit more indifferent to. So in no particular order, let's return to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is set to release in 2021, and will be one of the first MCU Phase 4 films to focus primarily on a brand new character. Now obviously the title being Legend of the Ten Rings, we will be entering the territory that the Iron Man films almost entered, but didn't really follow through, with a real Mandarin this time around, as opposed to actor Trevor Slattery. So this threat is something I was already pretty invested in, what with Iron Man 3, and I'm looking forward to seeing that actually get paid off here. As well as that with Shang-Chi being the master of Kung Fu, I'm looking forward to a really exciting potential genre piece, something a bit more old school from the MCU. So yes, I am looking forward to Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So now let's talk about the Falcon and Winter Soldier TV series. It seems very apparent that much of Marvel Phase 4 and beyond will be focused on televised entertainment on Disney+, Plus, as opposed to simply being all theatrical releases. Now one of my more minor concerns about the MCU in the past has been that this thing does move very quickly. So I think focusing a lot of story on TV entertainment is a really great way to go. We got a brand new trailer as well, and it looks like having the televised format has not had any impact on the budget, as the action sequences, costumes, and locations still look sublime. As a matter of fact, I think the visuals and cinematography look as good as ever. This is a very pretty looking show, and I really like the idea of this story about the legacy of Captain America's shield being a very complicated thing with different factors all stepping in. We've got the return of Zemo, and look how amazing the Falcon's new costume looks. It's nice to have a much more comic accurate take on the Falcon's signature costume. I think the TV episodic format is really going to do this show a world of good and allow us to explore this story and these characters properly. So yes, I maintain my interest in the Falcon and Winter Soldier TV series. Can I be completely honest with you guys? I haven't seen the Blade movies. I plan to. I really, really want to because I've heard really great things about them and them being Marvel's first major motion picture as well. Blade's legacy has a lot to live up to. Truth be told, I don't really know that much about Blade, but he looks really cool. And I think Marshala Ali is a really good casting choice. He definitely looks the part. I want to do a little bit more research on this one, to be honest. I want to see the other films to determine more my level of excitement, but I'm definitely interested in this one. The idea of this dude just hunting down vampires and stuff, like, sounds great. Sounds great. Spider-Man 3 I've talked about quite a bit already, but we did get a little bit of new information at the conference last night, but only a teensy bit compared to what the other project showcased got. We do have confirmation that this film ties directly to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and WandaVision, and that the film will be exploring the multiverse, at least to some degree. They were pretty cryptic about it. Whether or not the multiverse is just an after credits or a brief scene, we don't know, but with the many reports going around of the different actors from Spider-Man history reprising their roles for this film, including Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone and Kirsten Dunst. It does seem highly likely that a Spider-Verse is what we're getting. I'm not holding my breath, and I'm not getting my hopes up. Personally, I've stated before, I would rather this not be a Spider-Verse movie, but I'm not going to get salty about it. If it is a Spider-Verse movie, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what they deliver, and I'm sure they're going to do a great job. I'm going to keep an open mind. This hasn't changed the fact that I am eagerly anticipating MCU Spider-Man 3. So yes, obviously I'm interested in this one. I mean, I would be anyway. Spider-Man is my favorite superhero, but like, yeah. 
Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. This is another one I'm very excited about. I actually really like Doctor Strange a lot, as a character and everything. I think he's absolutely fantastic. That first Doctor Strange film, I thought it was good, like really good, but I don't think the film itself was as exciting as its titular character, and my point was very much proven by Infinity War, as Doctor Strange was an MVP in that movie. So I'm looking forward to seeing something a bit more psychedelic this time around now that the origin story is done, but of course we have director Sam Raimi at the helm, and that makes me all the more excited, as I think Sam Raimi's a perfect fit for this, and it's a multiverse movie as well. There's been rumors of different Marvel characters appearing in different forms, played by different actors and I think there's the potential for them to just go nuts with this and make something really fun really exciting and really creative and Sam Raimi is the guy to do it Sam Raimi is one of the best directors working in comic book movie entertainment like you know me the Sam Raimi spider-man films live and die by them they're the best like ever as far as I'm concerned so I can't wait to see him helm an MCU film the Eternals okay so this is gonna be kind of the next cosmic Marvel thing. I don't really know much about the Eternals in the comic books. Uh, and to be honest, I, I, I'm trying to get excited about it. I really am. But I just, I don't know. The Eternals generally just mean nothing to me right now. Maybe a trailer will come and change everything, but like for now, Eh, not really that interested. So we got another TV series, and that is the Loki TV series, which I have to be honest, I really wasn't looking forward to. Like, for starters, Loki has died how many times? And I liked the idea that we'd seen the last of him in Infinity War, and I wasn't sure how to feel about him getting away with the Tesseract in Avengers Endgame, but... I, I didn't know how much of that to really take for granted that Loki was still alive because we know how the timeline thing works. But it looks like we are very much following Loki into another timeline with this one. And I must admit, the trailer really swayed me. The trailer looks good. You definitely get that feeling of this is another world. This is another dimension. And it feels kind of... Kind of dark, in a way. With Loki in this brand new timeline which he doesn't understand, I think there's a lot of potential for some really exciting and compelling storytelling there. It also looks like Loki is running for president, which I guess that could be pretty fun, but it could also be a little bit dull. If we're getting yet another Trump allegory in the media, eh, that's getting old, but like, who knows? But what party do you think he's with? That's something to discuss in the comments below. Actually, don't. That's that's not going to end well, I can just tell. Then, of course, there is WandaVision, which we've already had a trailer for, and I was already really looking forward to it based on that trailer. It looks like there's a lot of loving homages to other TV eras, and it looks like it's going to have kind of that family show feel to it, but with a big Marvel twist. And we had the newest trailer, which is a lot more action-packed. It really looks like everyone's trying to break into Wanda's vision, I guess. I think this kind of revolves around, like, what, what happens when you have, like, a very super powered telepathic being who is grieving and like that's that's what we're going for here she's gonna like create a multiverse for herself to live in where vision is alive and it's gonna create all kinds of different problems and that looks really exciting but it also just looks like a really entertaining really stylized show that marvel have really jumped out of the box with so very excited for one division looks fantastic marvel's what if the animated series now this is something that could be really really good like, there's all kinds of potential for it. Like, what if the other 50% survived during Avengers Endgame? What if Tony Stark died in the cave during the events of Iron Man 1? What if somebody else snapped Thanos out of existence? What if Nebula was Thanos' favorite daughter? What if Uncle Ben never died? Yeah, that'll shut people up. But instead, we're getting more things like, what if Peter Parker were Hawkeye? What if T'Challa were Star-Lord? And it's like, you might as well change the title from What If to Who Asked. The more interesting of the character swap ones is what if Peggy Carter went on to become Captain Britain. That looks really cool. But it's just like, when you're swapping characters that have absolutely no relation, like, what what is the point? But I guess we are getting one of Chadwick Boseman's final performances, even if it is just voice acting wise. So... I'm looking forward to it for that alone, but also the tease of Marvel Zombies as well. It does make me wonder, why not just do like a Marvel Zombies animated series? I'm sure that would be a huge hit. I'm also a little bit concerned that I saw Iron Man in there. I really do think Endgame should be Robert Downey Jr.'s final appearance as Iron Man. So I'm not sure what to think about that. So what if 
I'm unsure about. Ant-Man 3, your now titled Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Sounds like we got a big quantum adventure on our hands. And well, it could be good. The Ant-Man movies so far have been hit and miss. The first one was absolutely fantastic and the second one was weak as water. So I would hope that Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is a bit more Ant-Man 1 than it is Ant-Man and the Wasp. But I think Ant-Man 1 still had a lot of Edgar Wright influence to it, which I don't think the other films have been able to recapture so far, so eh, we'll have to see. We do know that Peyton Reed is back on to direct, and I think he does a he does a fine job. But I don't know, after Ant-Man and the Wasp, I'm not really feeling the Ant-Man movies. I don't really see them as like a must-see at this point. Captain Marvel 2. So I fall into the category of people that actually thought Captain Marvel was pretty good. I didn't rush to see it in theatres, and I'm probably not going to rush to see this one in theatres, as Captain Marvel is still a character that I'm less interested than some of the other Marvel characters. But it does look like this one will tie in with Ms. Marvel, so we'll kind of see the expansion of Captain Marvel's Captain Marvel family, I guess. So yeah. Interesting enough, but I'm not rushing to see it. So we've got a Nick Fury-centric Secret Invasion series on the way, which I guess we could have seen coming from the after credits tease at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home. Ben Mendelsohn will also reprise his role as Talos, which is exciting because I really did like the character of Talos. As a matter of fact, Talos and Nick Fury were, for me, the highlight of the Captain Marvel movie. So. I'm interested in this one. I'm not rushing to see this one, but I'm interested. It sounds like it could be a good time. So while we don't really have any new word on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, we do know that a Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special will be releasing prior to that, and it will be in live action, unlike the recent LEGO Star Wars Holiday Special, which for the record I thought was charming and fun. It does look like the Guardians of the Galaxy are very much trying to follow in those sort of similar Star Wars footsteps, I really hope that they will uh, maintain it a bit better than Star Wars did, but I think if there's any outer space gang that deserves a Holiday Special, it's these guys and other than that, we don't really know anything more. It's live action, though, so that's gonna be interesting. So, uh, yay. Black Widow is obviously the next in line for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and, uh, I'm not really that fussed. This is a character who's had a good story going throughout the MCU, and, uh, she's dead, you know? <laughs> I feel like beginning Phase 4 with a character that's fucking dead, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's one of those things where I think Endgame was a great swan song for this character, and I, I don't see much point of bringing him back, even if it is just for a flashback. So, eh, eh. So, Ironheart is getting a series, so it does look like Marvel Phase 4 is drawing a little bit from the all-new, all-different era of Marvel Comics, and, uh, well, now we can stop calling Spider-Man Iron Boy Jr. Like, I never did it, because, you know, I'm... I'm a guy that has a girlfriend and stuff, but like, you know, we, we can drop that whole thing now because we have Iron Girl Jr., somebody else that will carry that character's legacy, and this is going to be a series, and I don't really know much about Ironheart in the comic books, but I know that a lot of people think it's very hashtag cringe. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna make up my own opinion, I guess. Maybe I'll, uh, check out some Ironheart comics before watching the TV series and really judge it from there, but for now, I'm more into legacy players personally, but um, we'll see. We'll see. So this is going to be a big attraction for the MCU going forward, the inclusion of Fox properties. We're getting a Fantastic Four reboot. And what we learned last night is that it will be directed by John Watts, who directed Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, on Twitter, the salt is real. Now, I can understand a little bit of disappointment here. I personally would have thought the best director of Fantastic Four movie would have been Chris Columbus. But a thing people do need to keep in mind is that the director does not make the entire movie, especially in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There's going to be a lot of other factors at play here. And John Watts Watts knows how to make a movie with a lot of heart to it, and that's a lot of fun and has a lot of momentum. He handles tension well. And I think this will bode well for the Fantastic Four. And as well as that, obviously this director is going to have a different vision for the Fantastic Four than what he had for Spider-Man. People, people are versatile, guys. Especially like film enthusiast, video essayist, Twitter. 
Guys, come on, be better. Be better. Give the guy a chance, goddammit. So I'm really looking forward to the Fantastic Four. I, I for one, love John Watts' contributions to the MCU. So, like, I'm looking forward to this as well. Armor Wars. What a, what a tacky title. But this is a series that is going to center on War Machine. And it is about time. I've always thought War Machine deserves his time in the spotlight. Very underutilized character, and now we're finally going to get to see a bit more of him. And it's going to center around, like, what happens when Tony Stark's tech falls into the wrong hands. War Machine is here to save the day. So it looks like he's very much taking up that kind of reign there. It's a theme that we've explored a little bit in Spider-Man. It's a theme we've explored a lot of in the Iron Man films. So it's kind of samey in terms of premise, but... I'm looking forward to it anyway, just for the chance to see Don Cheadle back as War Machine. So then there's I Am Groot, a TV series coming to Disney+. Plus. And there's another fat check for Vin Diesel for doing something anybody could do for free. Like, imagine, imagine what good causes that budget could go to. Now, full disclosure, I don't dislike Groot. I'm not disinterested in the character of Groot. But I'm not interested in having a whole TV series dedicated to him. That just sounds like they're milking it. They're milking every bit of sap they can from that wooden bastard. We get it, he's memeable, he's fun, he's lovable, but I don't need an entire series dedicated to him. So, uh, yeah, nah, not really interested in that one. Black Panther 2. Now, Kevin Feige did confirm that the late great Chadwick Boseman will not be recast for Black Panther 2. Now, this I think will be Chadwick Boseman's final on-screen performance before his untimely death. But we know that not all of his stuff was filmed, so it's going to be very interesting to see how they play this off. A lot of people very much have the assumption that Shuri will take over, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Either way, I highly doubt there'll be a dry eye in the house at the end of this one. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they, how they do this. So there's a TV series dedicated to Moon Knight, who I believe is going to be portrayed by Oscar Isaac. Never been really big on Moon Knight myself, I don't really have much knowledge of him outside of when he's appeared in Spider-Man stories, but um, that's okay. He seems like a pretty interesting character, so I'll give it a try. Not rushing to see it, but I'll give it a try. And there is, of course, the Hawkeye series, which has been shooting, and we've seen a lot of set picks from lately with Jeremy Renner and Haley Steinfeld. And it looks like we're getting a very good, very uh, family-centric show, and I, I think that could be really cool. Um, I think Hawkeye's best moments were very much in Avengers Age of Ultron, and I haven't really been that interested in him since that. Although I, I did really enjoy him in Avengers Endgame, so tell a lie. I'm not exactly buzzing for it, but I'm I'm gonna give it a watch. I'm gonna give it a try. There is, of course, also the She-Hulk TV series, which is is definitely gonna be interesting. Um, I would have really liked to have seen her dynamic with the more rage version of Banner's Hulk, but maybe it's gonna be more of a standalone thing. I don't know, but like She-Hulk can be a pretty interesting character. I don't really know much about her, but again, it's one I'll give a watch, but it's not one I'm rushing to. And the same goes for the Ms. Marvel series. Now, I know a bit more about Ms. Marvel thanks to the Avengers video game, so that's one great thing that came out of that. And I think Ms. Marvel has the potential to be a really intriguing character with lots of fun stretchy powers. But again, not rushing to see it, but I'm interested. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about Taika Waititi's Thor Love and Thunder, which will focus mainly on Jane Foster, I believe, and that's something I'm a little bit apprehensive about. Not because of some uh, woke SJW propaganda, no, nothing like that, I'm, I'm not one of those channels. But because I just didn't think that much of Natalie Portman's Jane Foster, and it's, it's never too late to expand upon a character, so I'll keep an open mind towards that. Um, and Taika Waititi is directing, and I really love Thor Ragnarok, and I really do like Taika Waititi a lot so you know maybe it'll pivot all on that i don't know i don't know but i'm i'm looking forward to it i'm definitely going to see that one in theaters i think if, if theaters is a thing by the time it comes out so after avengers endgame i wondered how much marvel would manage to maintain our interest in their cinematic universe but i must say i am really looking forward to a lot of what's here a lot of their offerings for phase four and beyond uh but what do you guys think comment below and discuss and as always if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it hit subscribe hit the like button and in the description below are links to different social media outlets as well as my patron and a join button for if you're feeling extra supportive and extra generous but of course Course, you don't have to do that. It's all completely up to you. It's a big ask. What matters is that you're here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great day.